Lifespan.io has released the recording of their Crypto Meets Longevity panel from the most recent Ending Age-Related Diseases conference. We'll tell you what was said and how it relates to some exciting things happening right now in this episode of Lifespan News. Viewers of this show know about the longevity philanthropy of Ethereum co-founder Vitalik Buterin, Richard Hart's well-known support of the SENS Research Foundation, Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong's involvement in New Limit, the goals of Transhuman Coin, VitaDAO, and more. But why is there such a crossover between the longevity community and the crypto community? That was one of the topics addressed during the panel. Chao Wang, a core contributor of leading Web3 Accelerator and founder community DeFi Alliance, traces the roots of this back to the early days of crypto, with Hal Finney, who received the first ever Bitcoin transaction from Satoshi Nakamoto, choosing to be cryopreserved in hopes of future reanimation upon his death in 2014. Here's what Chow had to say. Obviously, there, there's a historical reason. Um, uh, Hal Finney, alongside some other crypto OGs or Bitcoin OGs, uh, are just, I guess, you know, uh, very, being, being into this um, intersection of, of, two, uh, of both fields for a long time. So that's the historical reason. But um, it's also because of the fact that both crypto and longevity are like very much at the bleeding edge of, of human innovation and technology. Like both have the potential to fundamentally um, change how the human society operates, right? Like crypto um, decentralizes a lot of activities, uh, removing the, the middleman. Um, and, you know, that just have tremendous amount of impact. And, and then longevity, assuming we can live like maybe a few decades longer, right? Um, it, it means that people are, would be able to think much longer, plan for much longer. Instead of planning for like the ne next decade, you can plan for the next five decades. And that allows us to do much greater things, much higher riskier things, right? Um, so these two, these two fields fundamentally um, are, are at the bleeding edge and that naturally just attract the same group of people. Almost every single crypto person I know is really deep uh, in, in, in health and, and longevity and like, you know, taking care of, of themselves. Um, they, they, you know, what is the, the thing after, like, what is the most important thing for you after you've um, made, um, you know, uh, you know, reasonable amount of money and wealth and financial freedom? Like, what is the next, next most important thing? It's time. It's your health, right? So um, a lot of crypto people are really into this. And um, I personally um, helped seed it uh, a couple of um, longevity, uh, longevity or, you know, biotech companies. And I think, you know, in general, like longevity and biotech startups should really try to raise money from crypto people. Like there's just a natural fit in terms of funding capital and, and personal interest. Another panelist was Mark Berniger, a Swiss entrepreneur and investor who co-founded Maximon, a longevity company builder. He hinted that there are some wealthy and well-known members of the crypto community in the background of Maximon's work, and that this cross-community collaboration helps to provide mutual stability. But at this stage, I would say our main connection to the crypto space is mainly, as also Chao elaborated, some of these quite wealthy individuals, which uh, are now dedicating far more time into uh, health in general, but also longevity related projects. And I think that's great for both industries, because maybe it also makes uh, part of the crypto industry um, yeah, a little bit more sustainable and uh, having a little bit the broader vision. And I think that's why um, the two worlds have a, yeah, a natural match, which will become far more visible in the future. What I can definitely already say without going too much into detail at this stage that we have a few very well-known, very successful people from the digital asset space, which are involved in the background in our activities. So that's maybe another example, a very concrete one. Um, where we see these two worlds coming together. Another concrete example that was brought up was Vitalik Buterin's donation of a large percentage of all Dojalon Mars coins in existence to the Methuselah Foundation, a nonprofit medical charity focused on making 90 the new 50 by 2030. The foundation could have instantly tried to cash in by selling the coins, but instead they announced that they would seek to maximize the coin's long-term value. This provided inherent alignment between the Dojalon holders, the Methuselah Foundation, and by extension, the larger longevity community. Here is Chow explaining it. The, the holders of, the, of this token, um, they have an incentive 
to um, create value for for this token, um, and therefore, you know, potentially, you know, attract other people who might be interested in helping with the Methuselah Foundation to participate in some in endeavors uh, of the foundation. Um, it, it's still very early, um, but I, I can see the, the start of a trend of uh, you know longevity startups or foundations using crypto networks uh, as a way to engage in uh, the community and to attract more people into their into their mission. I personally feel like right now there's way too money, way too much money in crypto and there's not enough money in longevity. I agree with that sentiment and it's time that we change that. And it's important to note that this panel wasn't entirely cryptocurrency focused. There's potential for blockchain in general to play a huge role as well. As an example, Here's Lifespan.io president Keith Camito explaining his plans for the organization. I think we can definitely benefit from almost like combinatorial style clinical trials that have cohorts of hundreds of thousands of people with crowdsourcing. And I'm very interested to see uh, what I would like to, to build over the next couple of years is sort of like a, you know, a Lifespan.io 2.0 or, you know, Web 3.0 version that sort of integrates not just quadratic funding, but this sort of ability to exchange data which could also really make people feel involved and have agencies. Just again, spitballing, I can imagine that you could come up with some system where by, you know, contributing biomarker data, uh, maybe, you, you, you know, you get a token or you, you, you mint <laughs> an NFT by the process of doing that, that then is redeemable for uh, access to the therapy whenever it becomes available or something like that. I'm sure we could brainstorm it but something can happen there i'm not sure what but something <laughs> um, that's, actually, that's actually a really good idea yeah well, let's we'll, we'll follow up after <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can find the full video of this panel on the lifespan.io youtube channel linked in the video description the potential of this technology and the decentralized science movement in general is huge and if you share these goals and agree with chow that there's not enough money in longevity right now you have the opportunity to take advantage of quadratic funding and change that Lifespan.io is currently participating in Gitcoin Grants Round 13, which has a pool of funding specifically focused on decentralized projects sustaining longevity. Among them is the Web3 initiative that Keith explained in that clip. You can learn more and find instructions on how to donate linked in the video description. Remember, quadratic funding maximizes the impact of your donation. You'll have to hurry though. Round 13 is only open until March 24th, 2022. Together, we can help make this vision a reality. As you can see, the longevity and blockchain communities have considerable overlap, and we're still at the very early stages. We're not even yet beginning to realize the potential of these technologies. I think it's a safe bet to say that the future of health, science, investment, and charitable giving lie in large part at the intersection of blockchain and longevity. So I expect that we'll have a lot more on this soon. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon if you want to be among the first to know. I'm Ryan O'Shea, and we'll see you next time on Lifespan News.